You know, that's a huge name. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's a big name. You know, it's, uh, you're talking one of the greatest ouds in existence. Mm. Mm. You know, not because it's mine. You know, I just don't think smells like that exist. No. You know, you, you don't come across a smell mm. like that. Even like you go. Everybody knows him from the uh, Facebook fans of Ansar Oud group, which is actually his doing. He is the founder of the fans of fans of EO group on, on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Not exactly my favorite platform, Facebook, but once you've made that group, I was like, wow. It's such friend. a tight-knit group, um, really nice people on there as well. Yeah. Uh, everybody just seems to get on and enjoy themselves. Yeah. Um, there's no nastiness. Uh, and it's just a place, it's a safe place really. I mean, a lot of Facebook groups, there's, uh, it's a bit like the Wild West. You yeah. know, everybody's uh, sort of pecking at each other. Uh, but I think what we've managed to create here, uh, because I mean, without you, the group wouldn't be as good as it is. So thank you for well, taking part on it, mashallah. It's my pleasure. I mean, I, I, would, I would never normally visit Facebook. I, I, it was actually something I never even bothered to open, you know, yeah. until you started the group. And I was like, wow, it's, I never knew that we could have such you know, friendliness and, and sociability and, yep. and uh, you know, just overall generosity amongst the yep. members. You see them sharing samples and sending oils to each other yep. and even selling them for less than they bought them, which yeah, is, yeah. I think, you know, quite, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. quite generous. And, and um, you know, the regulars there are fantastic. You know, you've got Christina, yep. um, Anthony, um, Colin, you've got loads of people on there as well. Don't forget the Ryan twins. And Ryan, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You yeah, know, yeah, we got the Ryan twins. We got. Uh, yeah, it escapes me. Once you start mentioning names, and if you don't mention all of them, <laughs> yeah, we have to go through the list now. Going to be some WhatsApp people. Yeah. But no, if we've not mentioned you, it's not for any reason. It's just that there's I'm useless with names anyway. But right. there's just so many you know nice people on there. Yeah. Um, you know, it's 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 a really really good group, and I'm pleased with how it's come on. And it, and it's hard to believe that you know it's only less. I think it's less than a year old. Oh yeah, less than a year. It was it was in August, end of August that you started yeah, it, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And already seventeen hundred people. Wow. So that just it goes to show, you know, the success that it's had, and inshallah, I'm sure it'll be successful in the future, definitely. I hope so. Yeah. I hope so. Inshallah, I'm sure yeah. it will be. <laughs> so, right. Some of the benefits of being part of this group is that you get all these. Uh, pre-release uh, you know like uh, teasers and yeah. ideas and I even got an idea myself you know I, I made this poll uh, last week I was like should we release a, a Tibetan iteration of EO number two yeah should we do a Borneo Zen should how about a cologne I was thinking of doing a cologne right? yeah and then somebody because I didn't uh, I, I didn't restrict the the, the posting. So you know, people on, can, on, add their can own. actually add their own, yeah. uh, you know, polls to yeah. the to the list. Somebody added this purple kinam yeah. perfume, and yeah. it went like through the roof. Like, <laughs> more than like almost like three times the amount of votes as the top contender that I posted, which was the EO number two Tibet. Yeah, yeah. So I was like, we've got yeah, we've got ninety two people that have signed up for this perfume. Yeah. We cannot let them down. No, no, no. We have to do something. So what you're looking at is the official first, very first iterations, oh. like rough drafting. Yeah. You know, just like the, the crude thoughts. Yeah. Like, I think purple kinam, what comes to mind? Yeah. The foundation. The of foundation. It. Like what would I put in that perfume? Yeah. And so this is what we're going to be smelling oh, now. Oh, mashallah. <laughs> I'm pleased to see that. Yeah. <laughs> so let's see. So. Do you have a... Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I've purposefully not worn anything today for this reason. There we go. Oh, what do you think of very, that? Very, very nice. You know, bravo, you have a good nose there. Mm. I wanted to see what lavender would do to it. And, mm. you know, frankly, I don't think it works. Nothing, no, no. Do you not think the lavender... No, I think, I think it's too... I think it's too It's knowing when to stop as well. Because right. I bet you could just sort of tinker with it, come uh, just over and over and over and over and over again, 
And sometimes I bet you've got to say to yourself, you know, just stop now, it's, it's done. Actually, and I bet you it's hard to do that. They're not bad. No, they are good. They're they not good. bad. It's just that, you know, you're saying Purple Kingdom, that's a huge name. Yeah, it's, it's a big name. You know, it's, uh, you're talking one of the greatest ouds in existence. Mm. Mm. You know, not because it's mine. You know, I just don't think smells like that exist. No. You know, you, you don't come across a smell mm. like that. Even like you go like to like Tigerwood Royale or yeah, yeah, yeah. Tigerwood 1990. Yeah. It has this, it has the purple kinam fam, familial characteristic. Okay, yeah. You can tell, okay, this is Malaysian. Yeah. You can tell. The profile, yeah. Right, yeah. the profile is there, but it just doesn't have those, you know, like extra narcotic, narcotic yeah. extra galactic fruits and you know, <laughs> yeah. flowers and these just like crazy you know mind buzzing yeah. characteristics of it but i have a third iteration oh very good so let's see what we you know what we have here let's uh, put that there i think the thing is with oud i think when you when you get to that sort of grade of oud it, it, it's not so much what it smells like it's the effect that it has on you so right. when you get to the top grade ouds it goes beyond sort of just a smell and it starts to have an effect and that's how I sort of recognised um, between not, I won't say mediocre route, but you know mid-level oud and then the top stuff, the top stuff will, will have an effect on your mind, yeah. whereas the middle stuff it'll be a nice smell but it won't stir the senses. Exactly. Do, 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 do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, it's like a, you know, it's like a smell like just like all the other perfumes. You smell it but it doesn't move the soul. To have a perfume that to have an oud that moves the soul is very rare. Mm. To have a perfume that mm, actually rarer. moves the soul is mm. almost impossible. Yeah, yeah, it's just really, really beautiful. Now the thing about purple kinam, before we like talk about the perfume, we should talk about what is purple kinam. Mm. You know, we should have a clear understanding and definition of what we're talking about. Yeah, yeah. Say purple kinam is it's a nice name. Mm. It's like saying like purple bubble gum or something. Yeah, yeah. But what's purple kinam? Yeah. Right. Purple kinam is a type of kinam which is actually purple mm. in color. Really? Traditionally, it's from Vietnam. Yeah. Okay. This oil is a Malaysian oil. Yeah. Okay. And to me, when I when I first smelled it, I said, "This is purple kinam." Yeah. So there is a thing in in oud distillation that many people are not aware of, in that they believe that you take when when you want to distill kinam, right? Yeah. You take a piece of kinam. You grind it up, right. you dump it in the in the pot, yeah. you cook it, and then boom, there's your kinam. Right. It doesn't work like that. Right. Okay, there is this thing about kinam in that every tree, okay, before it matures into a kinam tree or a king super tree or whatever type of tree, right? Yeah. It's going to be a young sapling. Yeah. And then it's going to start to grow. It's going to mature. It's going to get infected. Yeah. It's going to get the fungus. And it's going to start to emit resin. Yeah. Okay. If this resin ultimately becomes kinam or not is unknown. Well, and what and what makes it become kinam? Is it the uh, is it the, the 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 degree of the infection? Is it that some trees can produce it and some can't? Nobody can say. That's that's incredible. Nobody though, can really. say because yeah. you have kinam right that is less developed. There is this theory that I've read from some Singaporean. Yeah, uh, entrepreneurs they say that well kinam is you know the infection is at least several hundred years old right 200 300 400 well you have kinam that's not even as infected as certain king super trees that have this black you know resinous pieces of just like, yeah, yeah. like solid slabs of resin yeah and those are clearly older than the kinam but this is kinam and this is not right so there's no way to know mm. there's no way to know one theory Okay, this is just a theory. Yeah. Is that the roots of those trees yeah. are drinking petrol from the soil. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Right, so petroleum yeah. is actually in the ground, right? Yeah. Oh, so the, the oil. Like the, the oil. Oh, yeah, 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 oil, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. So you have the roots, they go deeper and deeper. As the tree gets older and older, then yeah. these roots are going way into the soil. Yeah. Okay. So some of them, and how did we get this theory, is well, actually through Brunei. Yeah. Brunei is very petroleum rich. Yeah. Okay. And so far as I know, there's no petroleum in Vietnam, right? No, no, no. Right. But Brunei has this kinamic characteristic mm. just by virtue of the petroleum rich soil that's in Brunei. Oh, sure. And all of the Brunei wood, yeah. if it's fully, you know, mature and resonated, yeah. is going to have that almost like this black kinam kind of uh, 
characteristic if it's if it's old enough and you know good quality enough right yeah. it's going to have almost like a familial resemblance even if it's not full blown brunei kina right yeah so that, but it's just a theory yeah it's just a theory i i've met you know scientists agarwood scientists who claimed all sorts of things one of them told me that it's you know in vietnam through the vietnam war you have all these guns going uh -huh. off yeah yeah bullets bombs you know things just exploding you yeah. know chemical the, warfare and all that sort chemical of thing. Yeah, warfare yeah. In, in vietnam right yeah, yeah so and if you think of it that was when it was in the 70s yeah so now we're like what like 40 50 years after that mm. and we're looking at all this kinam that was harvested in the last uh, two decades how far back does Keenan go as a as any, um, sort of an aromatic? I mean, it's been used for many, many years in, in Japan, and I mean, it goes back to, I mean centuries and, and millennia. Yeah, you know, it's as old as agarwood. Yeah, there must be another explanation to it then. There is, there is. Mm. It's just that we don't know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, I mean, just mm. uh, I'm just I'm not saying that that's my that's my no, no, it's just what other people, opinion. Yeah, uh, I heard that literally from an agarwood scientist yeah someone who's uh, you know devoted his life to studying the resin and the formation and the yeah. trees and the soil and so forth a very remarkable chinese gentleman from from borneo oh sure, yeah. right yeah. so there you have it i mean there's all sorts of theories purple kinam though mm. you know is one strain of kinam that has this purple hue even in the resin yeah and then when you smell it it smells purple right yeah yeah, yeah so the actual oil that we had what we were you know we were let's like backtrack a little bit yeah every tree that is going to end up being either kinam or super duper black sinking nuggets of you know resin yeah uh, is at one point before it, it contains that type of resin it contains what in thai we call kian yeah you've heard me talk about yeah this. kian like the, right. there's a organic kian Kian, yeah, yeah, organic. It, kian doesn't have to be organic. Yeah, yeah. It can be wild. It can be anything. Right. Yeah. Kian is is high essential oil containing heartwood. Right. Is what it is. Yeah. So you have the wood, and you see these lines going through it, and yeah. it's it's all like this uh, murky brownish greenish hue. Yeah. It's full of. It's saturated with with the oil. Yeah. But it's not quite resinous yet. It's not like this uh, thick resin that you get in these pieces of like you know like that people carve in China and so yeah. forth, right? Yeah. That's kian. Right. So every tree, you know, whether it contains kina or any other wood. Yeah. You're with me, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is gonna go through this kian phase. Yeah. Unavoidably. Yeah. It's like you know you're an, a man now. You yeah. must have been a teenager at one yeah, point. Yeah. It's yeah. the same thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, in order to have the oil, mm. right, we can't extract resin, right? There's no such thing as taking resin and then distilling the crude resin and then boom, you have a bottle of oil. It doesn't yeah. work like that. Yeah. Oil is oil. Yeah. Oil comes from kin. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It, people that claim to distill resin, okay, it's just... Nonsense. It's not nonsense. I mean, no. you can. It's like you know. It's like grabbing your head like this. Yeah, I, I did catch my ear from the other side. It's like, no. it's not. It's not a straightforward process, and it's not really what. It's not the right way of doing yeah, things. Yeah. So purple kinam is a, a a strain of kinam. Yeah. Which is purple in hue and aroma. Yeah. And as I was saying, is you you can't really extract. Uh, this is a. You know, just like a secret of distillation. Yeah. You cannot extract resin. No. And this is a mistake that beginners do all the time. Yeah. Right. I've made it myself many times. Right. Just take the most resinous wood, just grind it up, cook it. It's a lovely feeling. Yeah. You know, I just uh, I just distilled. You know, how many tens of thousands of dollars of wood that I could have just burnt for years and years. Yeah. And. I'm going to have a super oil. You're going to have a super oil, but the reason that you're going to have that oil is because of the oil. Not the resin. That's in that wood, not the resin. Yeah. You see? So now the oil is contained in, in pockets of resin that, that trap it, right? And you might be able to extract that oil somehow. Yeah. But you won't be extracting that resin. And so that resin has basically just been thrown in the bin. So it's basically a big waste of money to do it that way. And a, exactly. and a waste of uh, wood that you could otherwise burn. 
I mean, so. is the, I mean, the, 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 all that precious wood is more is more is dearer than the money. I mean, I would think like you know, money comes and goes, but where are you going to find you know sinking grade agar wood? Mm, it's, it's finite, isn't it? You know, it's, you know it's, money, like you say, it comes and it goes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, uh, distilling kinam. This is what I'm trying to to, to bring us to slowly. Is yeah. that you know, as explaining the stages of it, mm. we need a tree. Mm. That's bound to become a kinam tree yeah. if it produces that resin and it gets to that fully resonated phase. Yeah. Eventually, if we let it go on for another hundred or two hundred years or whatever it takes, right? Yeah. But we need it to be harvested in the oil phase. Yeah, right. So it has to be. So, so that makes it even rarer than. So it has to be. Uh, basically, you need to catch the tree at that particular phase. Right. So yeah. we can take, and, and it can have both. Yeah. It can have the kinam resins that are, you know, extracted from it. And then those are connected to these kian portions that are full of oil. Yeah. This is what we need to extract. Yeah. Is the oil. Yeah. Not the resin. Yeah. Okay. So resin can be vacuum extracted, can be uh, CO2 extracted, it can yeah. be extracted in many ways. It's not going to smell like, like premium oud oil that's made from proper kinam, you know, oil. Yeah. Yeah. So, all of this, I just went through all of that just to get to this one point. Yeah. All of kinam and all of the resins in super king grade agar wood, whether it's kinam or this super duper stuff, right? Mm. It used to be oil at one point. Yeah. It then solidified into resin and it turned into resin. There's no such thing where white wood becomes boom, it just becomes black resin. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. It has to become oil first. Yeah. And then that oil matures into resin. Into resin. Yeah. So how do we know if it's a kinam tree? Well, if the oil that we have is redolent of that resin, and it's never going to be identical, mm. right? Because it's it's a different thing. This is resin, this is oil. Mm. Right? But if it has the facets of like when you heat that actual resin, you get those purple kinami facets. Mm. That's how you know yeah. that this was actually a kinam tree yeah. to be. Yeah. Right? Had they not cut it, yeah. you know. Or maybe there was kinam in it, then they took it and then you know they we found the wood, you know, yeah. and then we cooked it. Yeah. Right. Speaking of, I have an oil here. Right. Okay, now. Purple kinam is, is such a such a precious oil. It, it, believe it or not, I, I hardly ever use it myself. Yeah. So can you, can you believe? I don't have a bottle of purple kinam. Really? To my name. Yeah. Not yet. Yeah. Right. So I, it's it's one of my missions. I want to actually call Mr. Kruger in Jordan and say, send me, <laughs> send send me, me a bottle of my own oil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what I do have though, and you, you won't believe. Yeah. You won't believe it, right? I I was blessed to inherit this 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 flask from the the treasury of Sultan Qaboos. Mashallah, yes, yes, yes. Rest in peace, right? Yeah. And believe it or not, you know what you have in that bottle. Yeah. Is a traditionally distilled edition of purple kinam. Right. So it's not my orisent purple kinam, which was extracted. By Kiara gurus in, who are my teachers. Yeah, but the traditional method of, of cooking yeah. it. And the traditional, yeah. i.e., the Indian yeah. way so of cooking. Soaking, soaking yeah. and all that, right? Yeah. And once you get over that first you know, few seconds of initial oomph, you yeah. know, these Indians, they have this ferocity. And, yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. right? Wow, it's purple kinam, right? So I'll, I'll let you be the judge of that. <laughs> I, maybe I shouldn't have told you. <laughs> Do we have any? Uh, just, just we don't have oil. Okay, good. So 